Good morning and welcome to the first Sunday of Lent. Different Lent this year, many of us have given up much during the past year and so this Lent I'm taking something up, something of a challenge. Over the next 40 days I'm going to be reading two books on the Gospel of Mark and I'm going to be reading them in parallel uh, and I'm hoping to learn more about my favourite Gospel. But today we're going to have a very simple service of the word. Um, we'll open with the collect, uh, we'll follow with a confession and absolution, and then one reading from the gospel, a short reflection, uh, some short prayers, and then a blessing. So let's spend a moment or two together in companionable silence. Lord, we gather in your name to worship you here on the first Sunday of Lent or whenever we find ourselves in this service. A short prayer. A steadfast God, we thank you for including each of us in your family. As we allow the Holy Spirit to shape and develop us, may we seek to love, encourage and support one another, serving our communities in friendship, fellowship and faith. Amen. It seems appropriate to reflect on those things that we've done in the past week that we're not too proud of, uh, the things that we've thought and the things that we haven't done that maybe we could have. Could have done. The wonderful thing about following Jesus Christ is that we know that in his love he forgives us every day and we are saved by that forgiveness and by his love. So be confident that you are loved and forgiven and saved. Amen. The Collect for the First Sunday of Lent Heavenly Father, your Son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now there are three readings for today. The first one is the story of Noah and how God establishes his covenant with Noah and puts the rainbow in the sky. And that is Genesis 9, uh, 8 to 17. The New Testament reading is from um, Peter's first letter uh, and that's 1 Peter 3 18 to 22. Should you wish to you can look those up and read them but the reading that we're going to have today is the gospel reading. It's from the gospel of Mark chapter 1 verses 9 to 15. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of our Lord Praise to you, O Christ. As ever, there's a vast amount in this and in the other readings. Um, the reading from Genesis, I reflected on 
and asked myself whether that rainbow is the same rainbow or different every time. And for me, I think it's the same rainbow revealed every time. And it reminds us of God's love and promises to his children. Of course, we are his children. The other thing in the Genesis reading that struck me is that not only does God make a covenant with human beings, he makes a covenant with every living thing, every creature on the earth. And we need to remember that because sometimes we just think that God's made a promise to us. He hasn't. We're breaking God's promise to the rest of the earth by the things that we are doing to the planet. Enough of that. There's a wonderful picture in Isaiah 64 verse 1 where Isaiah says, Oh, that you would that you would open the heavens and come down. And it is mirrored here uh, in the Gospel of Mark, the, the, the verse 10. Just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove. There's a lot of Isaiah in Mark. Uh, there is an argument that says that the introduction to Isaiah uh, is what Mark takes as the pattern for the story he tells uh, in his gospel, that of blindness and lack of understanding. Even though God has put his son on earth, no one understands that God is embodied in Jesus Christ. The disciples occasionally get it, but then they forget it. They understand, then they forget. And eventually, of course, following the resurrection, the disciples fully grasp that Jesus indeed was God incarnate. So that's a potted history of my understanding of some of Mark's gospel. But for us, there are several things in this reading. I've picked out um, three to think about. The first one is questions about fulfillment and the time is right. I guess that's two. Really, let's concentrate on the time of being right. For many people who feel a sense of vocation, there is also a sense that the time is right. Note that Jesus is in his early 30s uh, when this baptism by John happens. The time is right. If you think of the reading about that we had a few weeks ago, the wedding in Cana. What concern of this is yours, mum? My time has not yet come. And then two seconds later, but now... <laughs> Indeed, there's a lot of when the time is right, things will happen in Mark's Gospel. And here, um, Jesus waits um, for or appears to be waiting for the, the experience in the wilderness and then for John to be imprisoned and before Jesus steps forward into his Galilean ministry. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. So that's the first thing. The second thing I wanted to mention was wilderness. Because wilderness is a central theme in Mark's Gospel as well. John baptises in the wilderness and that can be at the actual wilderness. But it's also he baptises in the wilderness of people's hearts. There's a promise coming, that baptism of repentance implies something more to come. And John says, there is more to come. There is someone coming who will baptise you with the Holy Spirit, who is far greater than I. I'm not worthy to tie the thong on his sandals, says John elsewhere uh, in the Gospels. So a lot of people who feel a sense of vocation, many of them, like myself, have also spent some time running away from that vocation before finally the time is right. Uh, I wonder if this is running away or if it's a necessary part of the experience of a vocation. To know that God has something in store for you but the time is not right. And I thought that was quite a useful thing to reflect on. Uh, and it may be that some of you listening to this have that sense that there's something more in store for you and that the time isn't quite right. Be confident that there will be signs and the time will be right at some stage. Then there's stuff about baptism. Baptism is really important um, for Christians. 
Um, for some it's absolutely integral. Uh, I couldn't be a Christian minister had I not been baptised. Uh, there's something about the whole sacrament of baptism um, that says that your old self is put away and a new self comes into being. There is repentance, so we have that echo of the baptism of John, but there is far more in a baptism into Christianity than simple repentance. There is a recognition that in this baptism we leave our old lives behind and begin a new life where we publicly are following the tenets of Christianity, following Jesus Christ in the way of love that he shows us all. So that's the second thing. And the final thing is temptation. Temptation happens every day. There's this idea that people have taken from the gospel readings, not just this one from Mark, but others, that Jesus is only tempted for, um, for 40 days and that's it. And he's got to be in the wilderness and everything else. But no, I think there's more to it than that. I think Jesus is pushed into the wilderness in preparation for his ministry. In the wilderness he grows closer to God and avoids the temptation of Satan. But all the time there he is being ministered to by angels and not and the wild beasts that we talked about earlier, all creatures. The creatures again are mentioned here uh, but actually those wild beasts some would understand them as creatures that we wouldn't really want to know very much about. But they will have been on the ark with Noah, won't they, if they're there in the wilderness with Jesus. Otherwise, how would they have survived the flood? Indeed, temptation is something that we all experience. And Jesus's temptations continued beyond the 40 days. As a human being, Jesus was tempted all the time. There will have been the subtle reminders of the temptations in the wilderness and other temptations that will have come upon him. That temptation to avoid the cross, calling out to God to take this cup away if he possibly could. So Jesus remained tempted and yet the wonderful thing is that he remains without sin despite the constant temptations. I have to say unlike myself and unlike many others. There's this sense that by following Jesus we can seek to avoid and resist temptation. And I think that's a really good thing. And there's something about Lent in there as well, isn't there? That during Lent that we sometimes put something down that we really like. My wife puts down chocolate for 40 days. I don't do a lot of chocolate anyway. And as I say this year, I've decided not to give something up particularly, although I'm not going to be having any sweets. I will continue to have chocolate and biscuits. Sweets, however, out of a packet is a no-no for Lent. That's my little nod towards Lent. But my main thing for Lent is this big reading um, exercise that I've set myself. And I'm hoping that it, I mean, it's going quite well at the moment. How long may it continue? And my temptation, of course, will be not to complete that. And my temptation will be, oh, I won't read today. I'll, I'll do a bit extra tomorrow. And so, again, in Lent, we learn much by what we take up, by what we put down about temptation. And we seek to be sitting alongside Christ in the wilderness to get some sense of what it must have been like. So I pray that in this time of Lent that we are looking beyond the mere 40 days, that we realise that the temptations that we avoid and resist in Lent are temptations that we could be avoiding and resisting through our whole lives. The things that we take up in Lent are things that maybe stay with us through our whole lives and make life, those lives really interesting for us and deeper and more meaningful. And I pray that for all of you who have a sense of vocation that isn't quite now, but know it's there, that the time will soon be right, that your vocation will be fulfilled. Amen.
let us pray. Lord, we pray for the world, the world in the grips of this pandemic. Hopefully we can see light at the end of the tunnel. We can see some way back to living a life in community. Maybe different from the way we lived together before, but still something approximating to it. And we give thanks for all those who are working in the NHS, working in pharmaceutical companies to develop and deliver vaccines, for all those in the country who have volunteered to at test centres and at vaccination centres. Uh, we pray that all the efforts here in the UK and in the wider world will lead us to a time when COVID is less of a massive threat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our church, for our church's leaders, both lay and ordained. Indeed, Lord, we pray for all those who minister in the churches and ministry covers a multitude of roles. It covers the, the elderly person who smiles at the new arrival um, and well, in a wet smile of welcome. It, it, it covers the sides people, the people who make coffee, the people who buy the biscuits and bring them to church, the people who are always there supporting the activity of the church as well as readers, and evangelists and others, the people who are involved in the fundraising and the social life of the church. So let's just remember that ministry is not just about wearing a shirt or a scarf or a robe. There's far more to ministry than we can imagine sometimes. Being a good friend is ministry and evangelism for instance. So Lord, we pray for all those who minister in your church in love and faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we pray for those who minister, we pray for those who during this Lent may feel a sense of vocation a calling to do something for the kingdom of God. It may be to work a little more, maybe to take something up in a food bank, it may be to support a charity, it may be to support the church in new and exciting ways. It may be that there is a vacancy on the PCC or that there is a call for a particular skill set that you have. If you feel the time is right, now may be the time to step forward and take up that call. And it may well be a call to ministry in the church. Lord bless all those who feel a sense of vocation and endow them with the confidence they need to follow through on that call from you. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit and for those who care for them. There will be those known to us who have suffered and are continuing to suffer from COVID, those who are anxious, we name them in our hearts. Strengthen them, Lord, and surround them with your comfort. Heal them as only you can and only you know they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we remember those we have loved and no longer see, and we pray for those who mourn them. Strengthen them with your love, Lord. 
help them with a vision of eternal life. Bless them with strong friendships and love and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, you continually renew us with your love, and by that love you nourish our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen us. Teach us always to hunger for him who, he, who is the true and living word, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his light to shine upon you and grant you all his love and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.